Hello guys, my name is Sharpen, and you might have noticed that today's video is a bit different. I'm currently located in my multimedia studio thing, w w which I don't have in real life. Uh, so I drew it, so I drew it right here behind me. This is a nice studio, and I gotta say, I, I like it here. Well, back to the topic. Today we're discussing top 6 mistakes beginner animator animators make. Okay, before we go in the video, I wanna encourage you to look at the bottom left corner of the screen. <laughs> yeah, you saw, right? <laughs> Pretty please? I'm just a human though. Okay, what are those six mistakes now? Well, let's get into it. Okay, so for the examples in this video, I used your animations I found on YouTube, Discord, other social media, etc. If you see your animation on there, please know it's nothing personal, you just need some practice, and I was basically too lazy to make my own examples. Plus, you also get a free explanation what you did wrong in the video, so it's a win-win situation. Also, I'm not listing any names for the bad animations either, so you're pretty safe here. Okay, the first mistake I want to list in this video would be something called the foot sliding flaw. Well, I named it that way. So it's basically when you make an animation and have your character walk around and you don't move him enough or you move him too much and the character's feet are sliding on the ground as he's trying to walk. Let's take a look at some examples on this high definition television. There it is, right there. Oh yeah, that's it, yeah. Well, nobody likes those, but heck, how should I fix that? Well, to your luck, I just recently made a video tutorial on both the walking and running cycles in my animator. I also explained the foot sliding thing in the video, so knock yourself out. Second mistake I want to list is so simple and yet nobody can operate it. It's the principle of timing. That's it. It's one of the 12 key principles of animations. It's essential. And while most of you can use other principles of animations to some extent, a lot of you seem to be struggling with timing. What I see in your animations is that a lot of times the character is super speeding through the entire video. Don't worry, I used to be one of those animators myself, but only because I didn't know exactly how rendering worked back then and all of my videos turned out super fast. And if your character is not speeding, it's going slower than my will to live before 10am. And sometimes I see your animations where some parts are extremely fast and the others are slow as hell. That's no balance. You can fix that by simply playing the timeline. For real. Once you make the animation, play it out. You'll see it's too fast. Simply select the keyframes and move them left and right in the timeline to adjust their speeds. Simple as that. But the principle of timing is really important to make your animation look like you knew what you were doing when you made it. And that's really important because I never know what I'm doing. Third mistake is arcs. Also one of the 12 principles of animation. Most it looks funny when you're animating a jump. It could look linear and create this weird triangular shape or you could think bigger and give it an ease. Well, if you think you're the animator hero because you chose the second option, you're wrong. Both of these options are false. If you really want to make a nice arc, you should layer the motion on two separate timelines. So you have all your horizontal motion on one timeline and the vertical motion on the other. In theory, you could give transitions to the vertical motion and not disturb the linear path of your horizontal motion. Guess what? It also works in practice. I mean, of course, most animating softwares already have this, but my animator is pretty basic, so we have to get creative. Simply put your character in a folder and do the following. Move the character where you want him to be at the end of the jump and don't move him vertically. Then move the folder up and down and not horizontally. After that, simply apply the transition effects to the folder and the whole thing should look pretty damn nice. Also, I explained how transitions work in a previous video before. The link will be in the description. The fourth mistake is posing. Now I know what you're thinking, posing is associated with wallpapers and image art, right? Well, you're false again. Posing is pretty important in video animation itself. There's something called the center of the gravity, or at least that's the best translation I can find on the internet. The center of the gravity is the point in the middle of all your character's weight. If that point of gravity exceeds the furthest place where a character is in touch with the ground, well then your character would fall. Remember. 3D animation is all about making it as realistic as possible, and that also means applying all the physics. I'll make a separate video on that as well. So as far as realism goes, don't do this. Also, our spine is one of the most flexible parts of the body. My animator is, like we said before, pretty basic, so don't be afraid to use the Z rotation axis. Our spine is flexible and mobile. Make your character be at least half as flexible as your cousin Alexa who goes to gymnastics. Yeah, I'm talking about you Alexa, when we're showing off. No one cares about your Russian pretzels! The fifth mistake you guys make is default lighting. 
Nearly all my animator animations are made with default my animator lighting settings. Now I'm not saying that the default settings are bad, I'm saying they're really bad. First, select the sunlight color and make it vary it from slightly yellow to red, depending on the time of the day your animation is taking place in, with the red of course being the sunset. And then change the ambient color to a desaturated bluish color. Then if you're making a night scene, don't use default lighting. The night settings are even worse than the day settings. Instead, keep it day, but change the sunlight color to be a light desaturated dark blue, and the ambience should be the same as before, but darker. For the night sky, use an inverted sphere and apply a night sky texture on it, and then turn off casting shadows, that will prevent the sphere from casting a giant shadow all over your scenery. Also, keep in mind that you have to make every scene visible enough, so use spotlights. You can use one, or maybe two, or use one and have the sunlight serve as the second spotlight. There are actually a set of rules on how you can make all of this professional, but that will have to wait until I upload Animated Part 6, in which we'll talk about nothing but lighting. I wish I could give you more on lighting today, but then there'd be nothing left for Animated 6. I promise you, it's a topic for its own full-length video. The sixth and the last mistake I'll be listing in today's video is pretty obvious. It's linear. I mean, if you're a really good animator and create millions of keyframes for one motion, then go ahead, I won't stop you. But if you're like most animators, I highly recommend you using transitions. They're simple and they can make your life so much easier. They save you a ton of work, create smoother motion and they're absolutely simple to use. Now I know your first thought might be, how can I learn a million transitions at once? But you actually only need to distinguish from the main three. The rest are only variants from those main three transitions. Ease in, ease out and ease in and out. Ease in will give the motion you apply to the object a slow start. It won't affect the end of the motion that will still stop instantly, just like with linear. Then ease out will give your motion a slow stop. The motion will start rapidly, as with linear, but it will stop slowly. And finally, ease in and out will basically give the motion a slow start, then speed up and give it a slow stop as well. After that, you're only left with those million variants of those main three. There's also the instant transition, which will basically move the object to the final point instantly. And that doesn't classify in either of those main three. And that's it. And that's the main six mistakes my animator animators make. Obviously there's more, but these are the six biggest ones and the simplest ones to explain. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button as I asked you in the beginning of the video. And while you're there, drop a like as well. If you want to discuss animation on a more personal level and not through some video on YouTube, you should join our Discord server as I spend most of my time there. There are also a lot of nice and friendly people that are willing to help you. That's it for what I have for you in this video and I hope you have a great day. Stay sharp!